Products don't build a profitable business. People do. And if you build competent people, they will make the profits and the products work for you. I actually experienced your food intensive training and it became so clear in those discussions how the Pareto principle, the 2080 principle applied. Hey, I buy at supermarkets all the time and suddenly there was a whole new world that came out of your food intensive. Hey guys, Tim Forrest here uh, with my friend Les, Les Cowie. I'm so excited at Tim Forrest Consulting to be able to talk to, to Les today and share with you some of his incredible insights. Uh, when I introduce him, I introduce him as one of the smartest guys in the world as far as capturing, and I do say that, I tell people, I know you, you've heard me say that before, but I tell my friends, like Les is one of the smartest guys in the world as far as capturing um, job, job structure and sharing that information with others. So Les, I know you've, you know, I've got both of your books and I share those with, in, with clients and also in different projects, but how do you introduce yourself? Oh, uh, well, first of all, Tim, I want to say hi to you and thanks for being on your podcast. Um, it's nice that you're not flying around in that plane of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you. and, to actually, and to actually see you sitting down relaxed at home. But hey, you know, um, I just latched on at an early stage where working with a lot of venture capitalists, it became clear that products don't build a profitable business. People do. And if you build competent people, they will make the profits and the products work for you. And so um, every time we acquired a small or medium business in the venture capital environment, uh, Immediately, training became critical. Training for key workers, training for salespeople, you know. And I applied, in fact, what I learned in retail. And in fact, you can remember, because we spent some time together, if you recall, oh, yeah. I actually experienced your food intensive training. Yes. And it became so clear in those discussions how the Pareto principle, the 2080 principle, applied. Um, and I learned so much uh, from you on how applicable that is to people in food manufacturing or processing in food supply. And then in the retail environment, you know, hey, I buy at supermarkets all the time. And suddenly there was a whole new world that came out of your food intensive. Well, I mean, one of the things that's done, because you know how, how turned on I am about the 2080 principle. Right. And that in, in any retail supermarket, 20% of the products generate 80% of the profit or 20% of the profits generate 80% of the income, right? right? And then you know that from my experience in job training, uh, with any job, 20% of the job activities repeat themselves 80% of the time and 20% of the faults happen 80% of the time. So after doing your class, you know, I walk into a supermarket and suddenly I'm alerted. One of the things that stunned me was how you emphasized in analyzing a retail store like a supermarket, how they must analyze their community that they sell to and what are the products that are needed, and especially which ones are needed more than others. You've got to have the coverage, right? And then there was that incredible session you did on product positioning as to where things should be placed on shelves. How and now when I walk through, I look at, the, <laughs> I look at what's higher up in the shelves, and I think, ah, those are the higher priced, higher profit ones. <laughs> and then I look down and I, you know, and there's that ranking I never ever realized how critical it is in retail to be alert to where you position products, uh, the importance of what's in an end cap, you know, um, all of that, just my eyes opened in the class. Amazing. It was, it was awesome. And it, that class helped us so much in some of the projects that we worked together on um, afterwards. Yeah. Do you want to share, let's get into some of the details of what you did and the value um, that, that the, the, the 
deliverables that you put together bring to organizations? Well, to try and keep it short, you know, um, when, when I go in and look at an organization, I really separate out the two categories of people. New employees with limited experience, and older, not older in age, but longer session employees with a lot of experience. And uh, some organizations fall into the trap of trying to teach new employees the whole job, you know, and PowerPoints and, you know, classroom environments. Well, with COVID, you can't do these classroom environments anymore. So it becomes very critical that with new employees that you get them productive quickly. And if you can get them 80% productive by teaching them 20% of the job, that's a good, good way to start, okay? Um, and then if you identify that of all of the things that go wrong that might lose you money, you know, 20% of the faults happen 80% of the time. Now you'll remember, <laughs> I certainly remember, you took me into one of the, if not the largest, um, fast food organization, uh, not only in this country, but around the world. And we went in and it's a sophisticated company and it's had sophisticated training for years. And where they train their employees in the culture of the organization and how to deal with customers and how to deliver and serve them very quickly, quality food, how stunned we were that at nowhere in the training, do you remember, do they teach fault diagnosis and correction? And then we identified for them the 20% of things that go wrong 80% of the time. And very often when things like that go wrong, and as we saw in a couple of examples at the window, remember? Yes. Customers getting angry, driving off and saying they're never gonna come back again. Well, losing customers because you're not teaching them that 80-20. And so, you know, we got together, implemented the program where you can do that. And companies, even if they've got existing training, if they haven't done the fault diagnosis and correction, and if they don't teach it that way, that's something that's worth them looking at with you. And I'd like to help yeah, as well. I was amazed. I was amazed. Just that one subtle difference, uh, the difference it made. We yeah. also we also worked, um, the project we took, that took so long was the large grocery chain uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> where you where you put that together. And I've in, in turn talked to other folks about that around the country uh, on the retail side. Yeah. So tell us, walk us through that process of capturing that information. What's the process and the benefit of doing that? Well, First of all, look at the occupations in a supermarket, okay? What are the 20% of occupations that interface with buying customers 80% of the time? It's the checkout staff, the cashier, the bagger, and customer service, okay? And so that's why we picked the cashier to start with and then isolate it out the 20% of things that happen 80% of the time at the cashier desk and the 20% of things that go wrong 80% of the time. Uh, and then built the training program to do that. Um, what was interesting was the way, and you know, we stumbled on it really, was the way when I talked to you about patrol pattern and inspection sequence, now you said to me, you know, a cashier has to have a patrol pattern because you're not just scanning products and you're not just focused here at your cashier desk. You know, your eyes need to be swinging around in a patrol. And it starts with people, especially now in the COVID days, how many people are in the wait line waiting to come into you? Okay. And then you come back and you you're paying attention how many products are on the conveyor belt, okay? And when you scan them, you know, your eyes patrolling that the scan has been effective, it's been correctly recorded, and then it's passed off to the bagger and your next patrol is, is the bagger, you know, bagging correctly, paper or plastic, you know, doing, doing the right thing. And then as you come back, the eyes go look at, 
you know, your light is your light on or off, telling people that your your um, lane is open or not. Mm -hmm. And then, as somebody starts moving forward, your eyes scan the content. Remember, <laughs> you came up with that yeah. one. The content of the uh, the what do you call it? The cart. Right, the cart or the shopping buggy. Yeah. Um, when you think about that, what I've seen in a lot of enterprises uh, on retail enterprises, oftentimes the training is simply a manual or a card on how to operate the cash register. It's the technology. There's just a checklist. There's just basically a step of, of scanning an item, how you scan an item and do a checkout. I mean, just a real simple process. That's just, it's almost a 10th of their overall, maybe not even a 10% of their overall job. That's the only documentation, the only information they're receiving about their yeah. job. Well, I remember us over lunch once, uh, I asked you the question, Tim, how many of your prospect customers, okay, have actually thought up, thought about what are the 20% of things a cashier should ask or say to a customer 80% of the time? And what are the really nice, beautiful ways to say it? And then what are the 20% of things that upset customers say 80% of the time? And what are the beautiful and nice ways to deal with it? Because in any business, but particularly in a supermarket, um, having that customer come back, the number of return frequencies. I remember in that analysis exercise that, that you did, the focus on are you having customers coming back consistently because you're treating them right and they feel good. You know, I, I can go and shop at a cheaper place uh, just around the corner, but I go and shop at that supermarket of, <laughs> that we, we did the exercise for because I like the people there. They're nice to me. <laughs> this it seems so simple and so basic what you're describing, yeah. but this this has generated millions and millions of dollars for your clients. Um, I remember oh. I remember I know that you you shared with me a story about the denim uh, facility, the plant. Can you oh, share yeah. share how how your how your process, the IP that you've developed? Yeah, well, that created? was a yeah, that was a textile manufacturer. And they, they were chalking up whopping losses. Um, and I, I was asked to have a look at it as a consultant. And I quickly identified that 20% uh, of the stoppages were caused 80% of the time. Their throughput, their daily throughput was 45% of what it should be. And 20% of the stoppages happened 80% of the time. 60% uh, of those because the the uh, textile mechanics were prima donnas who took their time about, they were in such short supply. And here in this country, there are a lot of technical jobs in such short supply. And these guys uh, were getting six figure salaries and so they're prima donnas. Um, so the delays were slowing down the throughput. And then uh, about 35% was because of operator error in working the machines. So we implemented a training program and um, we took in people, in fact, who had limited educational experience, sort of average eighth grade uh, with no basic skills. And we taught them the 20% of mechanical tasks that happen 80% of the time. And we gave them blue caps. And then we took our experienced prima donnas and gave them red caps. And so when a stoppage happened, the blue capper would come up, go check, 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 do the patrol pattern inspection sequence, up, and put up a blue flag. I can deal with this, boom, and they'd fix it quickly and the machine was up and running and so on. But if they came up and they checked it and it was not in their 20% category, they put up a red flag and then the red hatter came along and fixed it. <laughs> and the result of that was that uh, the throughput went from 45% per shift or per day to 85%. The company's losses went from four and a half million to six and a quarter million. In profit. In profit. 
in profit. Yes, yes. Yeah. and that's a six million swing. <laughs> wow. So wait, um, is that, am I doing that right? What's the math? Okay, so were they losing four million, then they started making six million? That's a ten million swing, no, right? No, no, they they were losing four million, and it swung to making two million. Two million. So oh, that's the six, six million. Yep. Six million swing. Yeah. Great. Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm glad you clarified that because that might confuse, you know, someone out there may have heard it wrong. <laughs> Well, that's different for, you know, in your food intensive, you address the food industry, you address the retailers, and you address sales teams, okay? So let me just take you and I bounce around one of those at a time quickly. Okay. For the food industry, you know, those are the processors and the suppliers, all right? The processors deal with a lot of automated equipment, especially the bigger ones, uh, the smaller ones, not so much, but where you're employing a lot of people working in a manufacturing environment, it's really very critical to take those jobs and make sure that you capture the 20% job content that happens 80% of the time. These days, I like doing that on 2D video uh, or where it is a very critical job with a high safety component. These days, um, based on my son, Robin, who was famous for, for the, being uh, at age 24, doing the Blair Witch, the original Blair Witch project. Uh, but now he's a leader in the world on virtual reality. So he coached his old dad and I've now become an expert on virtual reality, which is those headsets many people have probably seen for gaming. Right. And so now we've developed the technologies at lower cost to get training content into the headsets. Wow. And that teaches people the hands-on operations and safety activities in a manufacturing environment. In a supply environment, in the warehouse, you know, there are a lot of safety critical issues, but not all of them need to just go into a headset because that's expensive, you know. So it's a combination of 2D and virtual reality. And instead of putting things in PowerPoint, you can't visualize a job in PowerPoint. You can only visualize a job when you see it and do it. So I recommend that the food industry starts really taking a look at some of those things and not trying to, um, as we said in my days in Africa, which is why I come from South Africa, I have a Southern accent. Um, you know, don't eat the whole elephant. <laughs> <laughs> take one bite at a time. And so in especially in the you know, your clients who are large processors or large suppliers, you know, they should look into into your analytical methods and then in that process identify which processes, activities or jobs should be captured uh, for the twenty eighty. Not all of them, but you know, the critical ones need to be captured because with things like COVID and with turnover, you know, you need to have something that's consistent where you can rapidly get people up to speed quickly to be productive. So those are my comments on food industry. How do I go about if I have 10, jo 10 jobs in my facility or if I oh, have okay. uh, five people in my sales team, how do I decide which one so you're saying I should pick pick one of them and then I write down what it is their job is or I write down their job because and I know how to do it uh, from the workshop in the book yeah. uh, that you have. But well, how well, you may see here Les Cowie's seven steps. Okay. As you know, I used to do that using a manual method. And in the original books, a manual method is described on how you identify a job how you break down its content into the 2080 and how you do the fault analysis and patrol pattern and inspection sequence and put it together. Yes. Well, the manual process takes time, as you know, in that supermarket one we did together. Now I've developed a software called seven steps because every job has seven steps uh, from the environment that the job is in, from the process 
the sequence that has to be performed. Every job has a process sequence and you come back to the beginning again. Um, to um, what I call the ins and outs, because each process step, there are things you need to do the job. Those are the ins. Then there are the process steps that you must apply to achieve the outputs that you need. Okay. And then there's certain controls to make sure you're getting what you want. So environment, process, ins and outs. Okay. Then that frequency analysis, the 2080. All right. And I've got the software that if you capture these three, the software will generate the 2080 for you. Wow. Now you're starting to sort things out into how you focus on getting uh, learning content quickly uh, in limited capacity, but with huge impact. Then in the next thing is the fault diagnosis and, uh, sorry, the next thing is the checklists, because in order to write a script for a video or in order to um, provide someone with something that's printed and put into uh, plastic, you know, and put up on a wall where they're working, you need a checklist. And nobody knows that better than pilots and you fly around and your son is a pilot, okay, and astronauts and doctors. <laughs> Everybody should have checklists. Well, it takes a long time to write checklists, as you saw. But now the Seven Steps computer system, once you've done the ins and outs, generates the checklists for you, the press of one button, okay. Then you do the uh, the uh, patrol pattern and inspection sequence, okay? And then finally, you create the visual learning program in 2D or in some isolated cases in the headset. Those are the seven steps, but the software takes you through it. Wow. And in the old days, you used to have to hire in a television crew or video crew, your own internal video crew to go make a whole movie. The way I teach it, you're able to take little clips at a time using a smartphone, upload it into the seven steps. And then seven steps provides you with a computer application. Here, the smartphone becomes a critical part of the job, not only in industry, but in retail, you know. And by the way, you can go to any one of your checklists or you can go to any one of the fault diagnoses. What it's gonna do is download the checklist and when the checklist lines come up, next to it, there's a little I against some of them. And when you tap the I, that provides for you the little piece of video you shot on this phone. Wow. Why invest tons of money in professional video when you can get beautiful quality training content right here? So I've got this Apple app and I've got the, the Google Play app. Where, so, where, where do people go um, to, to, see, to see more about this or to... Sevensteps.com. Well, it's actually Seven Steps LMS, which is Learning Management System. So it's www.sevenstepslms.com. With the, the retailers, you know, once again, you've got, the two, you've got your sophisticated retailers who already have their methods and procedures in, in place. Um, and then you've got, you know, newer retails, retailers on the way up. I believe both of them can value, uh, you know, get value from those analyses that you do. Um, because it was really interesting to see how from the analysis, you were able to take that into pricing methodologies, and then the logistics of supply, you know, and when you supply, making sure that uh, your 20% that's needed 80% of the time, that the balance in supply is there, so that you're not overloading your shelf with something in low demand, you know, and I think, God bless this man, he's doing it already. Now, I want, I want to do on video and teach that so that you've got something that is reusable and available so that you don't have to wait to be in a class. And in COVID, you can't do these big classes that we used to do, but people can do it from their phone. Some of that is driven by innovation. Some of it's been driven by COVID. 
you know, COVID has been such a tough thing for so many people, but there have actually been some good benefits that have come out of it because humans are just so innovative. And, uh, you know, as you know, you encourage your clients to take a fresh look at their business yeah. in that food intensive training. And, you know, now's the time more than ever for people uh, who've been doing the same thing the same way for so many years, even though it may be successful, to take a fresh look. They can go to the seven steps right now and get a 60-day free trial. Oh, okay. You can analyze an occupation, break it down, and start putting together the learning content in 60 days. So for free, they can at least capture one job. Now, during that time, um, for anybody doing that, uh, I allow them to call in and one of my consultants will work with them uh, if they need some help to make sure typically all the video training is in there because the minute they take the free trial, it gives them access, they sign in, they can go to the section where they can do their own video training on how to key stuff into the software, okay, how to go and analyze the job and then key it into the software and then let the software generate a lot of the stuff automatically for them. But sometimes they're a little unsure of something. They just hop on the phone. Once again, this is a critical part of my job. I want people to reach out. So if you're, if you're here uh, seeing this at someforest.com or on my YouTube channel, someforest.com slash someforest consulting, be sure to, to send a note to Les. Be sure to go over to the page and give this a try in your business. I can't stress enough and share enough how many of my clients that I've worked with, one of the most important things that we, that we needed to do in their business was to set down uh, job functions and what the activities are in the job. And instead of just being a simple, you know, cause I've done, I've done just simple um, project lists or just simple action steps uh, for the job. Uh, what, what less provides his seven step system is a 360 view of the job along and I love the fault the faults as well but there's just so much there that you really um, should reach out to him go to his website I'd say sign up this has been fantastic Les I'm so glad that that we were able to get together and, and do this uh, do this conversation and uh, you know just thank you so much for being here on timforest.com thank you for watching us here at timforest.com um, like and subscribe if you know, um, if you're seeing this anywhere other than timforest.com or, or youtube.com slash Consulting, be sure to go over there and like and subscribe. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Do you capture job information in your business? Um, share, share a comment um, or send us a note. You can send me a note, Tim at timforest.com. Also send a less a note as well. And there's uh, places on his website to do that. And there'll be the links below um, as far as the direct, uh, direct links to his site. Thanks a lot, Les. Um, I appreciate you being here today. Uh, you're welcome, Tim. It's always good to spend time with you. I learn something every time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.